uh, Sergey Federer, just precision, right? Just speed personified, not even trying. I would contend the greatest two-way player in the history of the Detroit Red Wings organization. It's one of the best two-way hockey players of all time in all the NHL. He doesn't deserve to have his number retired. That's, that's a blasphemous no, statement. No. And just a, a comment in there kind of shook me a little bit and we've been talking about doing this for a very long time and we never we never uh officially got around to it but the day is here right now that this sergey fedorov number retirement thing for me is one of the most egregious things in detroit sports and a enough time has passed all right a enough time has passed through all of it but b sergey fedorov to me and I could, I'll give you the roster, I'll give you the resume if you want. To me, is one of the very best Red Wings in the history of the organization. In a very storied organization. I would contend the greatest two-way player in the history of the Detroit Red Wings organization. I'll get D-Max thoughts in just a couple of seconds on that. But what do you want? Three Stanley Cups, a league MVP, a two-time Selkie. A guy that played defenseman when it was necessary. A guy that ran the point on the power play was that great. Was not good, was not very good, was great. One of the game's greats, one of the best two-way hockey players of all time in all the NHL, let alone the let alone the Red Wings organization of all time. Yes, when you do stuff in the game of hockey that even Steve Eiserman didn't do, you are a great player. Hard stop. The man was MVP of the league the year Steve Eiserman got hurt. Think about that for a minute. We saw him take over games. And I know the knock, right? And there are a couple of different knocks, which we'll get into. DMAC even backed this up before. He made things look so easy that people thought he wasn't playing hard. That's how great he was, DMAC. No, you played with them. You you def- take the floor. Definitely was. You gotta remember Sergey was the type that, you know, looking around, it was it was more so that when you said, hey, uh, Serge, uh, we need some help here, that when he needed to be counted on it, it, w- it, it wasn't that he didn't want to do it. It was just like, oh, you guys need my help? Like, almost thinking that he wasn't as good at as he was. You know, unofficially Wayne Gretzky's favorite hockey player. <laughs> What's that tell you? You know, he's one of the, if not the most offensive, you know, gifted player as far as speed. He was, he was the Ferrari. Right, just speed personified, not even trying. You know, like you didn't hear his skates on the ice. He was just flying. His shot was, it was like a laser, right? It, I wouldn't say it was heavy. Like heavy was a Martin LaPointe that can take the glove off of uh, Patrick Waugh. Uh, Sergey Federer, just precision. But, I mean, as close to that, that you know, the bat, the greatest sports car. But, um you know, all the accomplishments are there. Sam likes stats, so the stats are there. But it's just, you know, when it comes down to it sometimes, I think we've seen this in sports, that different ownership groups, whether it's a family-run business, whether it's corporate or whatever, but there, there's a different attachment from the top. What have we always said? Um, one always say it. It always felt like you were an extended part of the Illich family. They treated you that way. Right, and in saying that, you, you, to this day, right, consider myself. You're still a part, part of it, yeah. So, right, right, exactly, and it's the way that that I'm treated and stuff like that. So there's this personal feelings in sports that you're not supposed to have, but if they're there, you can't ignore them, right? So there's certain ownership, and I think that transcends in different sports that take different things personally. You brought up a great point. Yeah, and, th- and that's been my stance on it for a very long time. We've seen this with Mike Illich, and I and I think I know why the rift is there. And again, I don't know. I'm just sitting here, you know, giving opinions and stuff like that. That's what I get compensated for to give opinions on stuff. For me, Mike Illich uh, has shown that quote unquote jilted lover syndrome a lot. Like when somebody says no, be it Sergey Fedorov who signed the the offer sheet with the Hurricanes that the Red Wings, I'm sure, begrudgingly matched, which they did because he was one of the great players in the NHL, and then ultimately leaving via free agency, which is his right. That was negotiated through the Players Union with the NHL, which was his right to do. 
that spurned Mike Gillich. We saw that later on with Max Scherzer. I believe the exact same playbook played itself out in the Max Scherzer situation where Scherzer said, no, I can get more somewhere else and rejected the contract that was offered. And then guess what? Went and got more somewhere else and ultimately won a World Series. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, like, you can't question that. No. You can't. Like, you can be upset by it. It's a business. But that's on you. It's a business at the end of the day. Bingo. It, it's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. And guess what? Business with Sergey Fedorov in a Red Wings uniform was never booming more. No, never. Because yeah. that man... That man is one of the greatest players in the history of the Detroit Red Wings organization. And I see on here, I see on here too, DB Coop 25. I don't have any bad feelings for Sergey, but his, he doesn't deserve to have his number retired. That's, that's a blasphemous what? statement. Hell no. That's a blasphemous statement. What? But anyway, number two says, uh, DB Coop, Neil, then why isn't Datsuk's number retired with that same logic? Because Datsuk wasn't Sergey. Go by the resume. Look at what he did on the ice. Look at the w- they, they were different players too. Andy so, just said Pavel was more of the all-terrain Humvee could play it, you know, what, would attract the physical play and reverse hit you, you know, sort of like what most Sider does now, you know, stick handle, steal the puck, all this stuff. Sergey that they were different players. They were effective and put up numbers, but they did it differently. Yeah, D Mac, let, let me ask you this too. And I've never asked you this before. And I can't believe I've never asked you because I've thought about it a lot. Do I overvalue the fact that he could play defenseman at any time at the drop of a hat and quarterback the pop? The, the versatility that I we haven't seen. The game hasn't seen that kind of versatility. He could play anywhere the on hybrid. the ice. He was, yeah. he was the hybrid. He could play you see anywhere. guys do that. You see teams do that today more so on a power play. Put a forward back there. But when he played. You guys have a defenseman hurt? Oh, well, let's put Sergey back there. And, and and he would start over other defensemen that were real <laughs> yes. defensemen. I think that I think that gets glossed over, Neil. Thank I, you. I, I, I think that people gloss over the fact of that and might might say, well, it was more of the nineties, it's not like today. Listen, Sergey Fedorov, if he was in his prime today, could still play everything that he did and would would be as effective in this day and age. Probably might be a guy that put up better numbers with the way that the rules are mm-hmm. and the protection that he had, mm-hmm. right? Because, I mean, I remember, like, Chelly used to just try to chase him around, take his head off, and it would be half the game chasing Chelly just to prevent him from taking Sergey's head off. But, like, you know what I'm saying? He was targeted back then, and he played through it. And that year, Stevie got hurt was my first year, the 93-94 season. How good was he that year? He was unbelievable until, God rest his soul, Bursey can cuss him in the corner in Vancouver, you know, going for a hit and missing the guy, and, and then he wasn't really the same. But, I, you know, the one thing is it's just, you know, more misunderstood. But I think if you go back is that not – I mean, it's a no-brainer, not only one of the best Red Wings in in organization history, but one of the greatest NHL players. And and, and, and he might not get his – he, he might not five? get his just dessert. Is he top Might five be one of you know when you're bringing all this stuff up as far as everything, I, and I revert back to the, to the when I listen to Wayne Gretzky talk about him, right? Like Wayne Gretzky is is a uh, just because he's the great one, but he sort of has the grind line mentality when it comes to looking at the game. Like when he talk, when I when you could talk hockey to him, it's not like he's above anything else. He sees it the way that you do as far as you know noticing the role that you play but also too in the greatness of other greats that's when you have the when you have a great and may arguably the greatest of all time point out the greatness of other people that should say something shouldn't and it? That, that's some, that's something that greg campy tells me all, all the time and it's, it is a great line like when when you're when you're good you tell people how good you are but when, when you're, you're great, great other people, other people tell, tell, you. tell you and that's but that's my point and i think people forget this even in the youtube chat like this talk about pavel datsu pavel's great entertaining as hell he he was i will say this that pavel datsuk was the red wings version of Barry Sanders in that when you he got the puck on a stick you stopped what you were doing and you kind of did that like you know and you would you would watch but 
He ain't Sergey Fedorov, man. Is Sergey a top five Red Wing of all time? Oh, hell yes. Yeah. Yes. There, there's no... I'm not having that. That is a slander-free zone. If, if you want to say Sergey's not a top five Red Wing of all time, yeah. we'll we'll put it on a poster. So what, what, Listen, is, is, is I'll it, give him my spot. Go ahead. <laughs> but, but honestly, what it is, it's Lindsey Howe, Iserman, Lindstrom, Sergey. That would be your top five, probably. No. No? Well, you forgot... Dude, who did you just forget? That always gets forgot when Saw you bring Chug? up, yeah. huh? Sawchuk, Lidstrom. No, I said Lidstrom. He said, oh, yeah, he said, yeah. So Lidstrom, Eiserman, Federov, Lindsey, and Federov. Well, I mean, you gotta. But see, this goes to the conversation of what I had with Sam, or um, before I went to bed last night, I had to chirp Sam because everybody's opinion, except for his, is valid. Um, but how we watch sports. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you could say because of the, what are you going to go by stats and go to how you can't go by eyeball tests to go by what you were told. So, is it, is it, but isn't it Terry Sachuk? Yeah. Is isn't it, it, so, Sachuk is it there, fair sure. to say if you haven't watched him? Or hasn't been like so to me, Gordy Howe, Terry Sawchuk, Sid Abel, all those guys should be grandfathered and they're not the greatest Red Wings that I've seen or been around. Like it like that's where it gets skewed, because I gotta throw Babe Ruth and I gotta throw Ty Cobb in there, and I don't even know what the hell, you know, I have not seen him play. So I do not I d I don't know. I think it's like that different the the top five in the history. Of the Red Wings of what we've seen play. Yeah. And then and then in the overall does it go stats? So to to your point, you know, is it is it Ted Lindsay and Gordy Howe mm-hmm. with those other three? I mean that's that's where it comes in.